Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? This is Kevin Unglad, and you are now tuning in to the Wise Guys Podcast, brought to you by Flowered Concrete. Check it out. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? This is your boy, Kevin Unglad. Hey, what's going on? Back for another week and another edition of the Wise Guys Podcast. First and foremost, first and foremost, I just want to you know, give a little shout out. Shout out to um, my students over at Windsor Locks High School um, and also a shout out to my students over at Goodwin College. No one told me to shout them out. I'm just shouting them out just because. <laughs> Beautiful thing. Definitely. So just giving all of those folks out there a shout out, especially if they're tuning in. Hopefully that will uh, make you feel at ease and um, appreciate it and have you guys all coming back to check us out some more. Um, Okay. And uh, other than that, Mark, what's going on, bro? How's your day been so far? Everything's been great, man. Just, you know, just still grinding and building. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. Right. Enjoying the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? Oh, man, for me. Be honest with you, Mark. The day has gone for me. So first and foremost, what I mean by that is um, I had a day off today from school uh, because uh, it's election day today. So, you know, the kids got off today from school and uh, I've been having car troubles, man. Um, I've been having car troubles as of late. Uh, so like my brake pads have been going bad and I've just been ignoring it. I'm like, you know what? I'll just fix my brake pads, you know, <laughs> when we go on Christmas break because I've been, you know, trying to save money and, you know, uh, you know, pay off some debts, you know, and, you know, like I told you before, I got a crazy credit card bill, you know, I got a student loan debt and all this other stuff. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, managing and taking money here and there and, you know, putting everything together, whatever, whatnot, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, just been pinching my pennies, but. Bro, I just couldn't do it anymore, man. Like, at this point, man, I was driving, Sunday it was, I think, <clears throat> one of my old students invited me to uh, his football game. Uh, they were playing in the playoffs over the weekend downtown. And so I went to the game, and they did pretty well. They did great. But, bro, on the way there, I was driving on the highway. I'm on the I-91, and literally, my brakes go out. Like, literally. Like, I'm driving. I'm driving, right? And I could literally press the brakes into the floor. And I would have to, like, fully press the brake pedal in order for, like, my car to slow down a little bit. And even when it slowed down, it started jerking. I was like, oh, no. This is not good. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. That sounds crazy, man. It sounds un- a little unsafe, dude. Very, very, very unsafe, man. Very, very unsafe. I was like, this is not good. And I was like, man, I don't know what to do. So um, <clears throat> I contacted my, my girlfriend's father about the situation. And then he told me to go see him. I went to go see him. And so he referred me to a mechanic that's pretty good and would do the service for a good, decent price. So I went to go. Yeah, yeah. So I went to go visit the mechanic today. I told him what the issues was. So he ordered the parts for the car. And honestly, he got everything done in one sitting. So I was probably there for like four or five hours. And, you know, even though I had a day off and, you know, it was, you know, the day was kind of wasted. It was all to a good cause. So I guess the day wasn't wasted. It's still productive. Yeah, it's still productive. You know, I guess the day wasn't wasted. But to me, I was just like, man, my one rare day off, you know, because I wanted to go do some laundry, whatever, kind of stretch out, relax, maybe watch a little bit of Sports Center first take. But that wasn't the case. <laughs> it's all good, man. You got it done. Yeah, I got it done. So I'm happy about that. So shout out to that mechanic. He was a really, really good guy. I appreciate him a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, so, other than that, uh, ah, Mark, I have some fantastic news to share with you, man. What's that? (laughs) Some fantastic news. Okay, so, sorry about that, I got a little cough. I apologize about that, my listeners, I apologize. Um, so, uh, long story short, man, um... How can I say this to you? So, well, all right. I'm just doing too much right now. So, as you know, Mark, you know that I taught middle school for two years, right? Right. And I taught for two years through um, this program called Teach for America that takes uh, people, um, well, undergraduate students and graduate students from uh, different communities all throughout the country, and they place them in underserved communities, you know, in order to give back, right? So... Teach for America is partnered with this program called AmeriCorps. Have you ever heard of AmeriCorps? 
never heard of it. Okay, have you heard of the Peace Corps? Yeah, definitely. So AmeriCorps is sim very similar to the Peace Corps, except that AmeriCorps just focuses on education. Does that make sense? So for college students or graduate students, you could work through AmeriCorps and either do an internship through them, through them or do a, uh, a fellowship program through them and get paid to go to school. And Beautiful thing. Mm -hmm, you get paid to go to school, and sometimes you get paid to work through them. And they usually give you a, a nice little stipend at the end. So AmeriCorps, you know, I did my two years of service. I completed it in June. AmeriCorps gave me a $4,000 refund uh, at the end of June to put towards my student loans, right? So wow, awesome. I got that. I received that $4,000 in June, July, and I put it towards my loans in August. But, you know, I didn't see anything take into effect or anything happen. Um, and I was like, man, like, I know I sent the check out, you know, or whatever, like, you know, what's, you know, when are they going to, you know, uh, receive payment? Because I'm like, I'm going to have to sue somebody if no one takes my check. You know what I'm saying? I was really freaking yeah. out, you know, bro. And so what ended up happening was that um, I called them and they said, oh, well, you know, this, these, these type of checks with these huge um, lump sum of funds, they usually take a certain amount of time to process. So give it another 30, 60 days or so. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I think it was Saturday morning, right? Saturday morning, I wake up, I eat some breakfast, and I'm chilling, you know, whatever, uh, relaxing, talking to my girlfriend. And then I just end up getting an email on my phone. I, I open it, and, it says, and it's my uh, student loan provider. And they're like, please be sure to check your account at the earliest convenience possible as a payment has been made and i was like oh no could this be so then bro tell me why i checked and the check cleared so now thanks to americorps my student loan debt uh, uh balance debt went from nineteen thousand five hundred and something and change to fifteen thousand three hundred wow. and change that's a beautiful thing man. yes man yes 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 absolutely man and like obviously this is only the beginning because the next thing is to crush that debt right and um you know you've been there with me since the beginning you know in terms of pushing me and supporting me to get that knocked out and it's kind of similar to uh you know uh what what we always talk about like you know you want to you know achieve something you just got to keep on being consistent right absolutely man you just got to attack it like you said Absolutely. Be intentional. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, for sure. So, uh, Mark, the reason why I bring this up to you today is because <laughs> our episode for today, episode two, officially, officially, officially focuses on student loan debt. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two, Young and Broke. <laughs> All right. Yes, 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 yes. And all of our beautiful listeners out there this is a beautiful episode or will be will be a beautiful episode because you get a chance to see mark in his bag as they say with his expertise because i feel as if this is where mark oh, truly 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 shines um where do i begin uh I, I, you know i was thinking about more so going into my story about debt but we'll save that for a little bit later mark what i want you to do right now i want you to respond to this i have i, pl I pl uh, plucked out some information for you and i've plucked out um some facts that i think uh, will be truly interesting to you and i think the people would love to get your feedback on this you ready ready okay so last month i want to say in the middle of october or the end of the month i stumbled upon an article from Business Insider. You're very well familiar with Business Insider, right? Definitely. So I stumbled across this article from Business Insider about a young lady, a young woman who is about my age. She's 28 years old. And so her name is Mandy Velez. Get this. Mandy Velez is 28 years old. She uh, is from Philadelphia. She went to the University of Pittsburgh, and she was 102, 102, 100, wait, 102, right, yeah, 102, thousand dollars in debt amazing what, what kind of doctor is she she's not a doctor hold on get this she is a journalist she is a journalist but but audience please bear with me bear with me let me run through all the information and i'm gonna have mark break this down i'm gonna ask him a question so mandy velez was a hundred and two thousand dollars in debt a hundred and k essentially right 
And so she graduated from the U of Pittsburgh, I think, in 2013 or 2014. I could be wrong. Um, and after she graduated, she ended up, uh, she started working as a journalist, if I'm not mistaken. So Mandy's working as a journalist, and she started calculating how much in debt she truly was. She saw that her job only gave her, you know, in terms of salary, 40K a year, and, you know, she had moved to New York City, Mark, because she wanted to be a star, a reporter. And who could blame her? You know, the big city of dreams, this is where all the, you know, the media conglomerates are, right? So she wanted to, she wanted to move up here and be, you know, in the Big Apple with us in Tango to, you know, to kind of achieve her goals and to reach her dreams. And, I, 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 and Mandy Velez, wherever you are right now in the world, shout out to you for accomplishing this and, um, and crushing your debt. And I truly, truly appreciate you uh, for, uh, you know, doing what you feel is best for you and your career. So check this out. So Mandy moves to New York City, and after she moves to New York City, she figures, okay, she types in Google, I think, how to crush debt, and then literally, I guess, Google gave her a bunch of different options in terms of jobs, so get this, so Mandy, and on top of doing what she's doing as a reporter, she picks up some jobs, if I'm not mistaken, um, as... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think as a waitress, as a hostess, just different small odd jobs. She babysitted, you know, people's children. She dog walked. She did a whole bunch of different jobs so that way she could crush her debt. And I'm sure you're familiar right. with this term, Mark. Uh, you've heard of the snow, snowball effect, right? The snowball effect in, in terms of crushing debt? Oh, yeah, definitely. So she had about five loans that obviously summed together became uh, the, the, the debt total she had. And she crushed the biggest one, and she started cr crushing that before moving towards the smallest. So her debt was seventy-five grand after she had graduated, and I think each loan would, ranged somewhere from 11% to like 5, 7, 8, 9% each. And so her interest ballooned uh, to... 23, 26K over the years she graduated. But wow. long story short, Mandy has officially, as of I think July or August 2019, ladies and gentlemen, she has crushed all of her debt. And as of the end of last summer, she went to a graveyard in New York City and threw a funeral or a debt party to kind of uh, just, uh, you know, be happy and to celebrate the, the, the death of all of her loans. Well, man, that's a beautiful accomplishment right there. So that's that's wonderful. Give it up for her. For sure. And last but not and last but not least, Mark, she makes me feel bad about my debt. Here I am telling you today. <laughs> here I am telling you today that. You know, with the AmeriCorps funding, you know, I went from 19K to 15K. But get this, Mark. Get this. Get this. She literally, last December, December 20, sorry, the, the, not last December, but the December before last year, December 2018, she had 35K left in debt after five, six years of crushing her debt. And she literally crushed her 35K in debt in eight months. Amazing. In Amazing. eight months grinding man in eight months can you believe that and if i'm uh not mistaken this is the last thing about this report i'm going to tell you um for mandy had she gone ahead and paid the 300 dollars a month of, of payments towards her student loans she would have finished paying it off at the age of 54 in 2000 wow. in 2048 the year 2048 Amazing. And paid all that interest, too. And paid all of that interest, too. So, Mark, this leads me to ask you, how does this happen, Mark? Um, for all of the listeners out there, I'm sure there are a lot of listeners that are currently in debt with their student loans, and a lot of them don't know where to turn. How do students end up finding themselves in this position? If you could just tell me, Mark, or walk me down the, the you know walk walk me down the the path or the journey of a young student in college who is accruing debt and is taking on debt for the first time. How does that happen to them and their family? Well, I mean, we're we're all conditioned. We're, mm. we're conditioned to you know go to high school, you know, graduate high school, and we always we all know right after high school you go to college. Yeah. And, you know, we're conditioned that, you know, take out the student loan, go to college, get a good job, and you'll be able to pay it back. 
-hmm. in theory, you'll be able to pay it back. But the way they sell it to you is, it's a no-brainer. This is an easy thing. It's, it's simple. Right. Get the loan, get the degree, get the job, pay it off. Yeah. And it's not as easy as they describe it. Right. And so, you know, as, as a young teenager coming out of high school, you Right. And like all investments, you're not guaranteed a return on that money. You're not uh -huh. guaranteed to get anything. You're just guaranteed to get that investment. And you did, you know, when you get your degree, it's not, it's not, a, you can't cash it in for anything. I mean, there's no direct value mm -hmm. aside from, you know, your ticket into a job or the knowledge that you might have gained. But it's not. You know, it's not something you can sell. It's not. It's not a true asset. Right. And and we we tend not to understand that. We tend to look at it as a guarantee option. Mm -hmm. And and you know, a lot of people in America are learning that harsh lesson that it's it's not as guarantee as they made out to be. So right. it's it's rough, man. I mean, it's it's really it's I consider it a trap almost because if if you think about it. America's largest asset on its books is not its oil, it's not its land, it's student loan debt. Hmm. That's America's largest asset. Right. Now, you would never think that, you know, one of the richest countries in the world would have a lar their large asset in student loans. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're essentially enslaving your population and forcing them to, you know, not forcing them, but you're conditioning them to take these loans to reach success, I mean, it, it really does turn into a trap for people because you have, you know, people like us, oh, people from our communities, we were looking for an opportunity, a way out, a way to build something. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if the only option that we're offered is the student loan to get a degree. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I agree. I agree. It's so unfortunate and it's so sad. Um, man, like I, man, like honestly, I I feel ashamed of myself, man, because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Like after hearing about her story and and looking into it, the way I feel is like if she can crush 32k in debt, then I can definitely crush this 15k, especially if she did 32 in eight oh, months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. But definitely, but. Mm -hmm. go oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, go ahead. No, no, it's it's fine, Mark. But, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to that, you have to look at circumstances. Right. You know, you you have your own place. You're out on your own. Is she living at home? Right. Does she have the same expenses as you? Yeah. Because you know, not everybody has the same situation. That's so true. A student a student loan to you may be different. For, you know, for a student loan for someone else, like someone else may have the capital to back up that student loan. They may have parents that have enough money to make their payments. I never but thought about that. But you being on your own, you know, it's a different ball game. Not everybody's playing the same game. You know, right. we're all playing a, a different game. Yeah. So, definitely, man. I, I, it's, you know, you can't really take someone's situation and compare it because, you know, you never know what benefits she had or, mm -hmm. or she didn't have. She might, she might have, you know, she might have had it just as hard, be, you know, directly on her own but you know just to cons just to you know consider that we all have that different a different ball game that we're playing of course of course <laughs> that's true man i think yeah you, there's something to be said about that also too like imagine how like okay so we live in a we live in a capitalist society right imagine imagine how hard it is already to have to even face that debt and come to the realization that that's your reality and that you have to pay that off because uncle sam wants his money but also exactly. but also think about too think about the amount the amount of the amount of sacrifice right think about the amount of effort that has to be made the amount of consistency and discipline and fortitude and persistence that needs to occur in order for one such as her to even crush that debt. Like I was even reading her story and she said that she took all of these odd jobs. She barely slept. You know, when she was at work, she was tired. And then on top of that, she didn't, you know, 
live you know above her means which means she sacrificed you know she cooked she stayed inside she didn't really enjoy herself she didn't really go outside you know to see her people or hang out with friends and she didn't even go on vacation Mark, this is going to be the first time in six years or seven years since she's been in school and out of school and working that she's going to treat herself to a vacation. Because as she says, and as she says from her mouth, because she deserves it. She's earned it. She's worked for that. And I don't blame her at all. She sure does, man. She sure does. Yeah. That's that's a real commitment right there, man. To really lock in and say, I'm going to destroy this entire loan. Yeah. Wow, man. That's, That's commendable. Super commendable, man. Super, super, super commendable. Yeah, it just makes me think, wow, like, okay, so for example, um, I'm going to give you my story a little bit. So for those of you listening out there, I went to uh, CUNY Brooklyn College um, for my bachelor's. Um, I also went to CUNY Queensboro Community College in New York City for those of you that are listening that are not from New York. Uh, and I also went to CUNY Queens College for my master's degree. So for my uh, associate's degree at Queensboro Community College, one of the schools in the city, University of New York system, I actually didn't spend a dime. Um, and I was very fortunate to not have had spent um, a- a- any you know cash at all while I was there because my parents, uh, their, their uh, combined total income wasn't... Uh, you know, wasn't sufficient uh, to warrant, you know, the, you know, the, fi- the, 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 the financial aid people to not give me anything. Um, it also didn't hurt too, to be completely honest, that uh, my uh, mom and dad filed this separate. Uh, so a little cheat code there. Uh, so for anyone who wants to know the cheat code, that works for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but it definitely works for me. Um, and then following that, when I got to Brooklyn College, uh, there was no need for there was no need for that to occur because you know God rest his soul at that point my father had passed uh, he passed in the in the in the fall of 2010 and I graduated from Brooklyn uh, sorry I graduated from Queensboro in the fall of 2011 and I went on to Brooklyn so now at this time my mom is not filing a separate between her and my dad she's uh, literally just fi- uh, filing herself as a widow as 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 a widow due to the fact that my dad had passed. So, you know, I was under just her income. So I was able to get full financial aid once again. Same for my sister. She was able to get full financial aid as well. And, you know, we received the Pell and we received the tap, all of that stuff. But Mark, oh my gosh. So uh, let me just get through this and then I'll have you talk. Um, then going towards that, uh, my master's degree, I graduated from Brooklyn College debt-free. I didn't have to pay a single dime. Man, was I blessed. But I remember when I was filling out uh, my financial aid, my FAFSA uh, form, and uh, I was trying to see if there was any funds lying around for me to go for my master's degree. And I remember speaking to the chair of the English department at Queens College after I got accepted. I was like, uh, is there a is there a, fin- a financial aid package that like a scholarship or something that will uh, enable me and afford me to come here you know to tuition free or at least partial tuition off and then she was like no and I was like uh okay so um yeah I definitely want to come here and I definitely want to register for classes uh but I need to speak to my mom first and reassess but I will give you a response in about a few days or so so she was like all right sure and so after that um, I went home I spoke to my mom about it and my mom was like well you don't have a choice you got to take out these loans though and I was like mom I don't want to take out a loan like I just want to do my thing and you know is there any money you have that can possibly that, that you can possibly help me out with and she's like no you got to take out a, you got to take out a loan my son and I was like oh gosh and so me at this time I'm just like you know what I'm already underemployed <laughs> um I'm working at a job where I'm making like 11 an hour with a bachelor's degree. I'm not getting anywhere. So I felt the need as if I needed to do what was best for myself, you know? So then right. I took the I took the loan out. I took the loan out and my first year was about $10,000 I took out about uh no, I'm lying. I think it was about uh yeah, that don't, don't that's that's about right. 9 10,000. And so after taking that money out, I went to school and similar to financial aid, they gave me money back. I, I, I think what I might have done is I might have uh, I might have borrowed more than what I needed to borrow. To be completely honest, I think gotcha. yeah, I think uh, all I needed was to take out eight or nine thousand, 
and I think I took out 12, 14. I'm going to be honest, Mark. I probably took out 16, 15, 16. I don't remember, but I took out a lot. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, man. I definitely took out more than I needed to. I was like, look, I don't have nobody to survive. I barely make money with this job. I'm going to need a little cash to get me through the year. So yeah. I take that money out. You know, I go to school and I do my thing. I mean, you know me, Mark. I'm a pretty smart, intelligent guy. You know, um, you know, I'm doing my thing, all A's, B's, here and there, whatever, whatnot. But get, the, get this, at the, at the end of my first semester, in the fall of 2015, financial aid calls me um, and they say, hey, we're going to need to see you. And I was like, uh, okay, cool. So then I put them off. I put them off, right? And then a few days later, I'm trying to register for my classes and they're blocking me from registering. I'm like, oh, hell no. I got to go visit financial aid, see what's going on. So I go visit them and they tell me, yeah, there's a hold on um, your account here. Uh, we're in need of four thousand dollars from you, and I'm like, wait, what? Why? And they're like, uh, well, um, apparently, uh, you might have borrowed more than you needed to, and now you have, you know, there's a certain amount of debt here in your account balance, uh, for for your classes for the next semester. And I was like, oh gosh. So right there, man, I had already realized my mistake. So at this point, I had spent all that money, Mark. There, I had spent all that money. I don't know where that three thousand, four thousand dollars went, but I think I bought. I, I bro, I think I bought a. I think I bought a PS3. I think I bought a few. Uh, I don't know. I there's. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely bought some things. Um, so I ended up having to take out another loan now. <laughs> Oh, for just for that semester, mind you, the 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 first time I took out the the, the twelve thirteen thousand, that should have just been for the year alone, right? So no, right. I ended up taking out another three thousand. So now my my inter, well my loan for the year, it's ballooned to about fifteen sixteen thousand. Uh, so after that, man, I was like, you know what? I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to borrow anymore. So going towards my second year, I borrowed just the amount I needed and. Uh, as I was going to graduate, I noticed that with my debt, it was going uh, into, um, uh, I forget the term. What's the term when before you pay, you have six months before you start paying it off? Uh, there's a term like, for it. It's like deferment or? Uh, it's not deferment, but it's like six, they give you a six month grace period before you start paying. Right. Is it, is it, is it forbearance? No. Uh, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, you know, know what I mean. I yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, listeners, by the time we wrap up this podcast uh, conversation, I'm going to kick myself in the foot. So will Mark, because we'll remember. <laughs> but yeah, so I had my six months grace, grace period to pay it off. So I said, uh, before I started paying off, so I said, okay, cool. I'll start paying my my um, my uh, interest. So I'm paying my interest here and there. But Mark, I'm again, I'm working at Queensboro now, right? I'm barely making eleven, twelve dollars an hour, and also at this time, I'm also giving my mom money because you know she needed help with the bills and stuff bro when i tell you i was so sporadic with paying that that i was barely even making a dent on my on my on my loans and then on my interest and then what i noticed is that after i graduated and then i i, I moved on um you know after gra getting my master's and you know got my teaching job in connecticut i noticed that the interest started ballooning man like it started just rising sky high through the roof to the point where when i actually started paying it off after the six months of uh you know uh, the deferment or the stall period or whatever you want to call it it had a, it had a balloon to 22,000 so they had told me i was going to be 20k in the hole i ended up being 22,000 in the hole man so mark wow. i know i you know sorry guys i was very long-winded with that but uh mark how does that happen to to to, to people like how how could that even come into uh, my orbit man I just don't even know how that came to be like like do you think do you think America uh, and, the, and, and in the sense of these loan companies do you think they target children um, well I say children right but I, but I really mean young adults but you know you're still kind of like a kid at 18 19 do you think they target them in order to wrap their heads around uh, you know just getting this stuff paid off because me personally Mark the way I feel I feel as if these kids don't realize that they're going to have to pay back all this money Absolutely. And um, to, you know, to an 18, 19, 20-year-old college kid, a student loan feels like free money, you know? Mm. So it was, especially when you, once you pay off your tuition and you have a little refund, it feels like there is no refund. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
say they they're trying to trap you, but they you know they're allowing you to trap yourself through mm. ignorance. Right. Because no one is actually trapping you. It's a choice to sign the paper. But yeah, definitely. I mean, the student loan is designed to essentially enslave you, mm-hmm. or 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 in other words, you know, financially institutionalize yourself. Yeah. Because you know, before these kids sign on the dotted line, they don't understand that the student loan is non-bankruptable. Mm-hmm. So uh, usually, with debt such as consumer debt, you know. Let's say you have a, a mortgage. Let's say you have credit cards, and you trumped up so many charges that there is absolutely no way you can pay it back with your income. Mm-hmm. You can actually, you know, file for bankruptcy and have your debt erased. Right. But that that does it, it has negative and positive effects. But you know, that's what you can do when you have more debt than you can possibly ever pay off. Mm-hmm. But with the student loan, it's designed so that you can't, you know, you cannot ever have that released from your name, even in bankruptcy. So it sticks to you regardless. Wow. And um, and if you don't, you know, if you don't pay off this loan, and let's say you go into, uh, if the loan goes delinquent, they can actually start to garnish your checks. Oh, no, really? Yeah, definitely. And um, they can go as far as, as um, taking your Social Security payments when you're retired. So they, they definitely don't release the handcuffs until they're done with you. And, you know, that's when they have their, their capital back. Jeez. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a really it's a powerful, powerful contract. And of course, we just sign; we don't really read through it, you know. But um, yeah, definitely, it, it traps a lot of people, mm. uh, and especially like our people that don't really look at the interest rate and, and consider that before they sign. Mm-hmm. It, it really does do damage on the way that it compounds because you know, just like investments can, you can get compound interest the loan can compound as well right. just as fast so it's, it's definitely a dangerous loan to get involved in if you don't have a solid strategy or plan yeah and um it seems like a lot of kids these days are just they're going to college with no plan mm-hmm. their plan is just to graduate but they don't know what they're going to do after that and that's where that's where it gets dangerous because you know they're offering these young kids the option to go six figures into debt without a serious plan or strategy because you know if, if you if I wanted to get a business loan I would need to have a business plan and you know different documents proving that I'm competent in business mm-hmm. but with a student loan all you need to do is just be a student and you get hundreds of thousands of dollars man it, it really is it's ridiculous it's ludicrous right. but um that's it's just the uh the world we live in at the moment yeah totally totally Man, wow, um, just, there's just so much to unpack there, man, um, so, uh, I, let, let me, let me pose this question to you, um, and, uh, I want you, the, the most genuine response you could possibly give me, um, do you think, do you think that these young kids going to these huge, like, you know, huge universities and whatnot do you think that these do, th- do you think that these young kids are even marginally aware of the amount of debt that they're go- about to get themselves in or even their parents sometimes or do you feel as if like you mentioned earlier that they don't see debt they just say oh it's free money so like they you know just dive right into it not really realizing that it's, there's going to be an impact on the back end what do you think Oh, no, I think they definitely understand that they're getting into debt, but I think they believe the, you know, the fairy tale of I'm going to get a good job and pay this off very quickly. Right. But, you know, that's that's not reality, you mm-hmm. know, because there's no guarantee that you get any job. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of, of students working jobs that don't even require a degree, but they have, you know, a substantial amount of, of secondary education. Yeah. So it's, we just have to really study the majors that we choose before we go into debt for them for like sure. you know not just not just you know as a kid I, I remember looking for majors online and the only thing i would really look at is what is the salary mm. and that's that's absurd why yeah, are you, you just can. looking at the salary you're not looking at the job group right you're not looking at the you're not looking at the job market so right. essentially you know just looking at salary does nothing for you you have yeah. to really dig deep into the into the into the career itself right because the, the the job can pay five hundred thousand dollars, but if there's no jobs available, you're getting zero. Mm-hmm. 
So it's, it's just something that um, we have to research and really dig deep before we, we make such a large investment mm-hmm. into our education. You have to know that you're going to get a return on that investment. Yeah. Because what is the true return on investment on a college degree? For sure. Mm. We don't we don't know. Education, mm. is that the return? Because right. the return is not monetary. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's, it's tough, man. Because if we say, yeah, if we say, yeah, the, the college degree is valuable, then we have to say valuable compared to what? Right. Because it's like, oh, but if I get my bachelor's, I could make 70 grand as, a, as an accountant. Well, I can be... I can get a, a plumber's license and make 70 grand. So what are you comparing it to? You yeah, know what I mean? Right, yeah. like, where's the true value? You know, just tell me you want to you wanna enjoy the experience and, and grow as a person. But don't tell me that the degree is valuable itself. You know what I mean? Like, right. there's different aspects of value with the degree. I understand that, you know, personal growth, development, you know, just growing as an adult and a professional. But the degree... Not every degree has the value that they say it does. That's true. That is very, very true. Wow. Um, man. Uh, oh, wow. That's making me, that's making it much harder for me to segue into, uh, my next question for you. <laughs> um, wow, wow, wow. Um, and please, if anyone out there has any questions in regards to this topic in general, um, and they really appreciate uh, the the game and the gems that Mark is spitting right now, can you please be sure to DM us, please, 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 DM us, uh, message us, uh, or if not, you can email us. All right, um, you can email us at wiseguyspodcast at gmail dot com. Again, that's wiseguyspodcast at gmail dot com. Please, um, and I'm sure Mark would love to answer your 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 answer your question. Excuse me, um, on a following episode, even if it's not pertaining to this topic. All right, um, Mark, I wanted to segue into uh, something that I thought would be very interesting for our listeners to hear. Um, when I was going for my master's degree and I knew, um, you know, that I would be in some debt, the moment I graduated and I realized that I was pretty much 20K in debt, you know what I said to myself, Mark? What? I said to myself, oh, wow, 20,000 in the hole. This is easy. I'm going to knock this out in a year. If I find myself a job that's like $35,000 per year or $40,000, $45,000 salary, I'll knock this out in a year. Mark, I didn't know how money worked, man. I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, man. So, we, we tend not to add like the, uh, the adult expenses to our calculation. Absolutely. And not even just the adult um, expenses, right? I didn't realize that if you're, you know, Mark, I did not know how many worked back then, and I'm sure that there are many kids that don't as of right now, which is why um, I am pushing this idea or this concept towards you. Um, I, how do I say this to you? I didn't realize that if I get a job that's um, that pays me 48k a year, right? I'm essentially really making. Thirty-two, thirty-three thousand uh, dollars a year after taxes. Like I didn't, re- I didn't realize that there's a certain percentage that the government is taking out of every single paycheck that stems from Medicare to Social Security and you know state taxes, local taxes. I didn't realize any of that stuff, man. I literally said if I get a thirty, forty k a year job, I'm going to pay this thing off in one year and be good. Why do so many? Yeah. Why why do so many people, um, especially the young kids out there? Why do they think that way? I personally, Mark, I don't know what you think about this, but I, this is why I'm posing this question to you. I think it's a lack of education within our own school systems as well. I never learned any of this stuff growing up, not even high school. It's true, man. It, it really is. I mean, it, it's. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say they intentionally leave it out, but it's not in their best interest for everyone to be educated you know, in finance and financial literacy. Mm. Because if people were educated when it comes to finance, they wouldn't sign these loans. Wow, yeah. And the whole point, you know, for a bank to be profitable, for a financial institution to be profitable, is to put people in debt. Right. So if they teach you how money works, no one would go in debt. Mm. And if no one goes in debt, it's going to affect the auto industry. Yeah. It's going to affect uh, the education, you know, colleges, their their business structure. Absolutely. So it's, it's just not in, you know, the world's best interest to have 
financially conscious people. Mm-hmm. You know, as a, you know, as a large percentage of the population. For sure. Because it just wouldn't be good for you know a capitalist economy that we're in right now. Mark, I know you study the markets, and I know you study uh, just you know you have a great sound. Um, literacy and understanding of finance and how it works especially debt um correct me if i'm wrong but as a country isn't the united states uh two trillion dollars uh in the hole in terms of student loan debt absolutely wow definitely i believe they crossed two trillion just a few months ago right oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's insane man it's, it's america's largest asset on its books absolutely Wow. So, I mean, as, as an investor, I like to get a return on my money. Mm-hmm. And I, I like to get a solid return on my money for as long as possible. Like, right. I want to be able to predict the returns on my money. You yeah. know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. same thing with banks. You know, if I can trap a student into a student loan for 25 years and guarantee that I get 7% of my money every year, that's a beautiful deal. <laughs> it's just business, right? Yeah, and then, oh, and then I can make sure that it's non-bankruptable. Oh, and then I can take it from your paycheck if you can't pay me. <laughs> oh, and then when you're ready to retire, I'm still taking that shit until I get my money. Wow. So it's like, you know, you got to, you know, we, we can have empathy, but we also have to think in terms of business. That's a beautiful deal. Yeah, you're right. What bank wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. All you have to do is push the agenda, you know, education, education. And then when, you know, make these loans available to everyone. And mm-hmm. as you make these loans available to everyone, the colleges say, oh, wow, the, the banks are offering unlimited student loans to these students. Mm-hmm. Let's raise our prices. Mm-hmm. So then everybody wins. Everybody wins. The, the, the colleges see the banks raising, you know, the colleges see the banks making student loans available to anyone Mm -hmm. so they say wait a minute these kids have unlimited loans unlimited access to student loans let's raise our prices they're going to get the loan anyway Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why everything's becoming expensive when it comes to you know education prices everything as well as textbooks everything is inflating that makes sense absolutely absolutely that makes a lot of sense every like every large move affects another you know another sector as well so as the banks made student loans available to a lot more people the colleges recognize that and they raise their prices it's interesting because like you said they push the agenda to say go to college get your education oh uh you don't have a job yet oh oh well that's fine well go back for your master's beyond and and, you know you'll be fine with that oh you're still struggling you're underemployed in certain um fields and you're uh uh or or you're 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 underqualified excuse me in certain fields and you're overqualified in certain certain fields oh go get your doctorate or your phd beyond you know what i'm saying they push (laughs) what's up I'm involved in this this situation where, you know, they promised me something. I paid for something. They promised me something. Yep. And then I didn't get it. So then they called me back and they said, okay, give us some more money. And, and they promised me something again. And then it didn't happen. So then they called the guy back and they said, okay, one more time, come back. Just come give us some more money. He promised you it's going to work this time. I said, sir, I said, sir, are you involved in a pyramid scheme? He said, no, I go to college. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. No, it's fine. It's like, now, come on. If I, if I don't tell you it's college, you think it's a pyramid scheme. It's like, wait, give the money. Doesn't work. Go back. Give the money. Doesn't work. Go back. After a while, you got to stop going back. Right. I mean... I mean, no, I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not, when I'm talking like this, I'm not saying education's horrible and college is horrible. Of course not, yeah. But the, the system itself is corrupt. Right. The right. system itself is corrupt. Of course. That's, that's what I feel. Uh, right. Education is extremely important. You know, we do need this, and college does develop people, but mm-hmm. at the same time, the structure in which they're doing it is financially institutionalizing an entire generation. You know what's so funny about that, man? It was so ironic. It's like everyone, like you said, everyone's winning, right? The banks are winning. The colleges are winning. The, uh, you know, the admin, um, uh, you know, behind the payroll and HR and finance at the colleges are winning. You know, the, 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 the private sectors and, 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 and uh, uh, 
programs that are funding uh, these schools with their endowments. Everyone's winning, man. But they all, all of, all of, all of this is to is meant to be in place to push the student in order to have the student to thrive, succeed, and to uh, uh, go out into the world and provide some form of service to make the next generation better. Or well, not to make, well, for the next generation itself, excuse me, to make the world better. But it seems as if everyone is winning in, in, the, in, the, in the short term except for the student, man. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, someone's got to lose. Yeah. And when you when you enter something which is an investment and you're not strategic, you will lose. Right. Right. It's like, you know, a lot of like, you know, a lot of jobs are being taken right now due to technology. Right. You know, there are a lot of jobs are being replaced. Now, if that person did their research in the beginning, they would have saw it coming. Mm -hmm. A lot of people's degrees are just becoming worthless just because of the transformation of the job markets. Absolutely. And, you know, if it's like if you researched, you would have saw this, man. Yeah. You would have seen it. I mean, sure. just like with accountants. I mean, accountants are important. You always want to have an accountant, you know, in your circle. But after a while, eventually, uh, an accountant is going to be replaced by an app or some type of software. Right. So it's, it's kind of <laughs> like you, you, you've got to see the writing on the wall and really dig deep instead of just looking at salaries like I was looking at. Yeah. Because it's. This is an investment. We're talking about six figures here. Absolutely. Like, no one makes a six-figure investment and just, you know, just a click of a button and it's nothing. Yeah. You have to really think hard about this before you commit to a major. Without a doubt. And, you know, it's crazy, bro. You know, like, like all of my life, like, you know, investors have told me, you know, never fall in love with your investments. Never. Wow. And what do we do? We fall in love with the major. We fall in love with it. We we go into debt for it. That's and true. We get screwed. That's true. That's you don't true. Don't have an emotional attachment to your investments. And That's it right there. Investment. That's right. And people get emotionally invested and attached. Absolutely. Wow. And it should be all business. I mean, happiness is important. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're, we're trying to build legacies. We're trying to we're trying to create something for our families. Mm -hmm. Why would you go emotional if you're trying to create something? Mm -hmm. Why like? Why? That's kind of selfish in, right. my, in my mind. I agree. Like, if I'm trying to save my family from poverty, I'm just like, no, I want to do what I love. I want to be an artist. I mean, granted, you can get, you can be wealthy as an artist, but I'm going to go for something that I know I can create money. You know, I can create wealth for myself and my family. But yeah. It's a tough one, man. It it's is tough, tough man. But, you know, you, you can't judge. But it is tough. It is tough. Yeah. Um, we have the statistics, man. Right. L ladies and gentlemen, please, all of the listeners out there, if if this is uh, affecting you in some kind of way and you do not feel uncomfortable with sharing uh, your story, please share your story uh, to both Mark and I um, in Instagram under the comments. Or if that's too personal for you, please be sure to DM us your stories about being in student loan debt because uh, a lot of us out here are dealing with it. Um, and if you don't feel safe in doing that and you feel like there might be a point of compromise with you know hackings and social media and stuff, you can also email it to us once again at wiseguyspodcast.com podcast at gmail.com once again that's wise guys podcast at gmail.com all right um and yeah this is uh this is really not easy so yeah please 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 share stories with us i think it's very important that people have uh you know other people that they can uh bounce their stories off of you know just to continue to build the community to know that you know myself or um people uh, such as Mandy Velez, we're not the only ones out here that are dealing uh, with this plight in terms of student loan debt because the student loan debt crisis, if I'm not if I'm not uh, mistaken, Mark, it's stopping us from moving forward with our lives. Like I'm 28, I'm, so, I'm, I'm soon to be 30, right? I want to start, you know, saving up soon to buy a house. I want to start saving up eventually to have kids, uh, to get married, and to do all this stuff. But uh, the student loan uh, debt crisis in America today is is is, is halting everyone from uh, going about their natural timelines for what they want to do in their adulthood in their lives right now absolutely bro and it's no coincidence i mean it's almost like you know they they've sacrificed the generation just so they can get rich right because by the time we actually have to face these problems and our generation is ready to retire 
these guys will be dead. I'm talking about the one set. <laughs> yeah. Or, orchestrated this whole, you know. This whole this whole, whole paradigm, yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's a tough one. And, I mean, we can dig our way out. You know, look at the, the young lady that she, she got out of 120 k worth of student loan debt. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of money. That is. But you notice one thing, bro? Yeah. You said... What did she do to get rid of the debt? She she walked dogs. She she uh. She she babysat. Uh, she was a um a waitress at a couple of restaurants. She did a lot of she did a lot of odd jobs, now man. My, now my brother, my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do those things have to do with a journalism degree? None. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. So, so, so all that and, <laughs> and the damn degree didn't even. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. And ladies and gents, we do not want you to think that we're making a parody of this or we're making fun no, of uh, Mandy Velez's story. What what we're essentially what we're what, what we're essentially laughing at here is the sheer uh, hypocrisy of what a degree stands for in times of student loan debt, and also just the absurdity of the fact that this woman had to take on all these jobs that were not related to her field of particular interest and her field of uh, specialty, and that's how she paid off her loans. Yeah, absolutely, my brother. And um, and I want to second that. You know, I have tremendous respect for, for graduates of, of college, you know, secondary education. It takes tremendous passion hard work and determination to get these degrees but i'm just highlighting you know the issues with the system and how that how the value of the degree is just being sucked away yeah and and the value of the degree, degree is being sucked away for one reason and one reason only what is that these these student loan companies made more money available to everyone mm -hmm. so what does that mean Everyone and their mama can get a degree now. Wow. Right? Yeah. That means any, anyone. Anyone. Yeah. So now, when there's a job for a certain major, you know, let's say let's say we have a journalism job. Right. Now, if, if 100 years ago there was 50 people applying for that position, now there's 1,000 people applying for that position. Mm -hmm. Why? Because everybody and their mama could get a degree because student loans were available to everyone. Mm-hmm. So now they call this academic inflation, where mm -hmm. there's more degrees out there than there are jobs. Yes. And, you know, and I'm sure of it that when they made these student loans available at a, at a higher rate, everyone was like, this is awesome. You know, they're including more people. They're allowing opportunity. But that opportunity dried up very quickly mm -hmm. because we all know scarcity creates value. Yeah. And influx of something lowers the value like you know diamonds are are valuable mm -hmm. but 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 let me go to let me go to the park in Rosedale and find that the entire park sits on top of a, a diamond mine and right. there's just millions and billions and trillions of dollars worth of diamonds there mm -hmm. diamonds are going to go down in value because we just found the gold mine you know what I'm saying it's just right. like it's, it's all about scarcity so yeah it's interesting man it is it's very interesting it is it is um wow uh i feel as if we lingered on that topic uh longer than we expected to but it's good i think i i think i feel as if the people got a lot of nuggets and, and gems out of this so far what do you think absolutely and um you know i don't mean to to be preachy i hope that you know it's more of just informative and yes Agreed. And just making people aware of what's going on and, and, you know, what's happening. Because some people think this is just a coincidence. Like, oh, man, it's just my luck that I can't find a job. No, it's not your luck. People literally are not finding any value from their degrees. Yeah. And, I mean, I love assets. You know, I, I love to invest. So, right. you know, to put $100,000 into a degree... And I understand a doctor, lawyer, you have to put a lot of money to that, so that I'm, aside from that, to put $100,000 into a degree, it just doesn't seem right to me because, right. you know, I can't pass that degree down. Mm. You know, I, I want to, if I put $100,000 into a house, a house, I can pass, I can pass that down. Yeah. But putting it into a degree, now I have this piece of paper. When I die, I, my child's not going to be an honorary, you know, bachelor degree holder yeah you might as well put that in the shredder <laughs> yeah for real 
for real. At the end of the day, it's going to be what did you build? What did right. you invest in that you can pass down? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. It's a tough one, man. No, it is a tough one. Again, once again. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And then, you know, in this information age, and I'm sorry about the rambling, but. No, you're not. You're doing great. Up. No, this is great. <laughs> this, this, this information age, you can get the information on the internet. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I have a bachelor's degree in biology. I, I'm pretty sure you can find the content online and and digest the information. You know, mm-hmm. that's the same amount of information. I like, get what you're, you're saying. Not, yeah, it's it's not exclusive to get higher education anymore because the internet is higher education. Yeah. You can find literally anything on the internet. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 very interesting. It you know, is because um we're not limited to just college as a a resource for education when the internet provides that. Right. It literally provides anything you want to search. Absolutely. So, Phew. It's, uh, it's interesting, bro. It's I, interesting. I felt like we just ran a marathon with that one, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Right? Uh, you know, gets, gets the blood flowing. Bro. Absolutely. It's one of those topics that you can just go on forever, man. No, of course, of course, really of course. Can. But again, right, we are wise guys, and we are attempting to become more wise each and every day, especially you all in our wise community. So this is what we're here for. We're here to provide tips, share our different ideas, and to go about and exchange to receive information that will help us become better wise and to wisen up in our everyday lives, right? So um, that's really, really, really uh, important to know and to say. So all right, cool. So at this point in time, ladies and gents, we'd like to... After a very, very long time, <laughs> we'd like to segue ourselves into our second segment. All right. Uh, so, Mark, I think I finally found the name for our Q&A segment. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the name of our segment is Yearning for Wisdom. All right. Mm. Yearning okay. for Wisdom. And for those of you out there uh, who might not know, like who, who might not be not might not be privy or up on the term of yearn. It's okay. Uh, yearn. I'm an English major, so I specialize in these in these things, right? So I hope the 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 debt got me something with an English degree. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, to yearn something is to want, right? To when you yearn for something, you want it, you crave it, you seek it, you uh, uh, you pounce upon it, you try to uh, 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 grab and and latch onto something that you want for that you want to be for you so when we yearn for wisdom ladies and gents that means we seek the knowledge to better ourselves and to transform who we are as people so that is why we call or i have called or we have called we've named this segment yearning for wisdom all right uh so for our yearning for wisdom segment today uh, we have two questions uh that mark uh happened to pluck out uh today uh mark would you happen to uh I don't know. Would you happen to share one of them uh, today? I, I think I also have the other one, but would you happen to read the first one off? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we definitely received a few emails after we launched the Instagram. Just of different different questions and, you know, different topic ideas. So, cool. like you said, we, we plucked a few of them out, and I have one right here. Okay, sure. I'd love to hear it. Awesome. It says, what are some things you wish someone had told you when you were entering your 20s? Mm. What are some things you wish someone would have told you when you were entering your 20s? Is that one for me? Yep, that's for you. Excellent. Thanks, bro. Um, Man, I wish that if I had a mentor, I wish that they would have told me that this is not a race. To take your time. Don't get caught up in what everyone else is doing. We kind of mentioned this in the, the last episode, in episode one. Uh, don't get caught up in everything people's doing. Um, you know, focus on yourself and just grind, 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 grind. Another thing I wish I would have known uh, in my early 20s, um, the importance of having a mentor, man. Um Wow, if if uh, or maybe it's not that I didn't know the importance of having a mentor in my early twenties. I just didn't know where to find them, or I didn't even realize in my early twenties that having a mentor was super important. Um, so even uh, I go back to my time working at Queensboro, 
you know, I was working as an assistant to the secretary in the theater department there. And I remember there used to be a few young cats, you know, all the time they used to come in and speak to their professors or whatnot. But over time, you know, they got they, they became very uh, interested in seeing me there and started talking to me and making conversation with me. And I, you know, just started uh, mentoring them and schooling them. You know, while I was there, because at that time I was still going to Queens College for my master's degree. I was about right. around that whole entire time. I was about 25, 26 when I was in school going for my master's. And these these guys, they couldn't have been any older than 21, 22, 23. And I just always give them advice in terms of, you know, just stay focused on you, you know, uh, do good in school, you know, get your good grades, you know, um, try to get your degree as quick as possible and and after that you could start working and you know start building your life and saving for your life and stuff but if there's one thing i always told them is that i wish that when i was your age when i was 20 21 22 that i had a mentor that would guide me or could guide me into right. you know being a better young man and to go down the paths that would lead to success or that would lead to um a foundational process that would you know lead me to success uh so that's something I used to share to those young guys. And I'm, you know, essentially, I, I would like to echo that back to myself and to that beautiful question that we got out there. Um, shout out to Anonymous, whoever you are who sent that question. I, we really appreciate you. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially something I think is really important. Um, if there's one thing I wish that I knew in my 20s, I wish that I knew how important mentors were. If you are currently 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, you are at the ripened golden age right now in your life. Please find a mentor and you will not forget it. You know, it could be anyone from your older brother, your older cousin, you know, someone who's working in the same field or interested in the same field as you, you know, whoever. They don't even have to be that much older than you. Uh, all they need is just some knowledge, poise, experience, and, you know, just just, just, just a good, you know, head on their shoulders, right? You want to make sure your, your, your mentor is someone who you know has a good head on their shoulders, someone that can counsel you, and someone who's leading by example. So, yes, invest in mentors early. That would be, uh, that would be my um, uh, answer or my uh, yearn for wisdom. Um, yeah. Definitely. So true. For sure, for sure. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I know there's one for you too, Mark. Uh, you, would you like to hear that question right now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure thing. Let me pull it up. You know, just because without guidance, man, you're just experimenting. Yeah, absolutely. And it, yeah, I just feel like, you know, it's always good to have an, an older voice, someone that's been, you know, been through the fire. Yeah. Because uh, even, in, even even investing, with, you know, investing on my own, you know, my mom has told me certain things to do, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm not listening to her. She doesn't invest. Right. But it ended, ended, ended up being the right move. Right. So it's like you really, you sometimes you do have to take outside advice, you know, because they've seen it all, they've 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 went through it, they've lost. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, so I I found the question. I'm ready for you. Ready? Oh, cool. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the question for you, Mark, is what are some hard truths you've learned over time uh, within your young adult years? What are some hard truths that you've learned over time within your young adult years? Hard truths. So let's see. I'd say one is that working hard doesn't guarantee success. Mm. You know, because um, you know they always say work hard and you'll be successful, but that's not always true. Right. Because you know you can you can work the same job for forty years and yeah. never ever get promoted. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone's in control of your life, if someone's in control of your employment, you can do the same thing for as long as you want to. And you can work as hard as you want to. And they may just say, listen, you know, great job. See you tomorrow. Wow. Forever. You know, wow. so I feel like, you know, you have to be strategic. You can't just work hard because you can you can be ready to run a marathon and you've got everybody lined up. Yeah. And. And when they shoot that, you know, shoot that gun and everybody starts running, if, if you're running in the opposite direction, 
you can run as fast as you want to, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. Dang. So it's and like you said, it goes back to the mentors. You have to have some type of guidance, mm-hmm. someone to say, "Listen, this is the right way to run. Right. Stop running backwards. Right. You know, you're not going anywhere. You're you're, you're literally losing." Mm-hmm. And um, I guess a second one is you have to you have to lose to win. That's another hard truth. So mm. expand upon that, please. If, you know, if you plan on being successful. Plan to lose because mm. it's a hard, it's a hard, tough road to where you want to be. Right. You know, just like the degree situation. You got your degree. I can't find a job. Mm-hmm. Here's the hard part. You thought that test in college was hard. This is the hard part. Right. You got to sell yourself. Where's yeah. your value? You know, you're gonna fall flat on your face so many times. Yeah. And it's a Wise. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, so For sure. Just, it's, it's just you're going to keep falling, man. And then, you know, it's like, and when you see a successful person, let's say they have a hardship and they fall, you know, everybody laughs at them. Yeah. But but he, he just learned a lesson. You can laugh all you want. Mm-hmm. You're going to come back stronger. Of course. You know, so it's it's all about losing at the end of the day you got to lose to win just like this super long situation people may say i lost you know you lost for the moment right get up and keep going get yourself out of the situation and you will win agreed it's a lesson it's a lesson yeah <laughs> wow. and um it's crazy because generations from now they're going to be talking about this about this student loan you know debacle this whole situation and how how horrible it is yeah we don't know if they're going to forgive it all or not but um, this is really it's it's, the, it's an interesting thing. It's an amazing situation because if it's America's largest asset on its books, how could America possibly forgive it all without going bankrupt as a nation? Mm-hmm. Wow! It's 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 interesting, man. That is That's interesting. A lot of debt. That is. You know, just the whole country's debt. It's worth more than all of their gold, all of their land, all of their military, you know, assets. Yeah. What the hell do you do with that much debt? You can't forgive it. Right. Without destroying the dollar. Mm-hmm. Because you've got to print all that money. It's got to come from somewhere. Of course. A lot, yeah, a lot of people don't even know that um, there is not enough cash mm-hmm. in this world to pay up all the outstanding debt. Right. Wow. It makes no sense, but it's it's just how it is. There's not enough cash to pay off the debt. Wow. And it it goes back to fractional reserve banking, and that's a whole different podcast. But um, there's not enough cash to pay off all the debt in this world. So how can it get paid off? Mm. It, it it can't. It can't. All of the debt in this world cannot get paid off. Which is why they stay on top. It's, yeah, man, it's, it's it's an interesting game. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but uh, we'll stop right there before the Illuminati gets us, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, also, you know, um, I work for the, well, I, uh, yeah, I, I guess you can say, you know, I work for the state. I work for the city as a, you know, educator. You know, I'm going to. I'm gonna muzzle, put a muzzle on myself at this point in time, just for just for this episode. <laughs> hey, man, uh, everything, anything happens to me, you guys know why. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so, ladies and gents, um, before we leave you all today, as you know, we want to make sure that we sum this all up beautifully. So, we're going to transition to our final segment of today's episode of the podcast. All right. So, you were just now at the point where we were yearning for wisdom now we're going to provide you with words of wisdom yes 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 we're back we're back once again with our words of wisdom segment so with that being said uh words of wisdom mr mark pruden uh what 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 are some words uh what are some words of wisdom you have for the people today
So my words of wisdom for the people today is, you know, I'd probably tie it back into just being intentional. So mm-hmm. when people are taking out these student loans, it's it's all about being strategic. You want to you want to have a well researched major, you know, something that you really dug into, not just for one day, right. not just for two days. We're talking months. Yeah. The salaries, the job market, the job growth, you know, where it's going technologically because we don't want to get replaced by the technology that it, you know, that it's adding. Yeah. Um, you, you definitely want to really know what you're getting into and make sure that this job cannot be replaced by technology easily. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, you may want to get into something that's related to technology or related to, you know, the innovation of, of jobs. It's right. just, it's, I guess it's all about being strategic, making sure there's a job market for the major that you're choosing because, you know, they say do what you love, but you can do what you love on the side while you're making money right. because at the end of the day, you got to feed your kids and feed your family. Of course. Um, and, and also, if you do have student loans or you're in college right now, I would be constantly attacking that. I mean, mm college is not a vacation you were there for education right so if you're there for education get the education get a job Mm -hmm. pay pay off that interest so it doesn't compound attack attack the loan while you're in school Mm -hmm. because too many of us are considering going away to college a party yeah if you consider it a party you know when the party's over it's not going to look too good Mm. so you, you want to really, you know, you want to be conscious that there's a loan. You know, yeah. some people say, I don't want this hanging over over my head. Well, don't put it over your head. Don't take out the loan if you don't want to handle the loan. You right. know? Yeah. Attack it from day one. You know, this this isn't an income-producing asset that's going to pay itself off. Agreed. Like, if, if, I buy, if I buy a rental property, the rent is going to pay off the mortgage. Right. If I buy a student loan and I sit on my ass, you know, it's it's not going to do anything for itself. Like the loan isn't going to, my, my degree is not going to pay off my loan. I have to pay off my loan. Yeah. So you got to be punching it from day one or it's going to snowball Agreed. into a nice large sum. So, uh, yeah, definitely, man. That's, that's it for today, man. I definitely, what's, what's yours, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm eager to, to get your uh, take on it because you, you are, you're, you know, you're into the education system. You've been through it. You've, been successful with your education and obtaining your degrees and reaching your goals man so what would yours be for today um yes thanks mark i first and foremost i would just like to say that i think coming from the perspective of someone who's had student loan debt um at, well i'm fortunate right at, at this point i'm celebrating with the fact that i just got four thousand shaved off and me standing at 15k um to everyone else that that's like that's like sliced cheese so i'm very very fortunate in that sense um so um my word of wisdom to the people today um is that first and foremost know that it's not personal and that it's just business these these companies uh these 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 financial uh loan lenders see you as a form in which they can prosper off of and they can and and they can make their money and 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 profit off of so as much as they are using you use them so try to if you have to go to school to get an education to specialize and to get a job within your field of interest make sure that you don't spend any more time than you actually need to in college so that means if you know you're taking out a loan in order to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a, a biologist, or whatever the case may be, don't. This kind of go, goes back to what Mark says. A lot of people get caught up in the the superficial with the partying and all this other stuff and these you know these miscellaneous activities and whatnot. Don't get caught up in all that stuff. Go there for your purpose. You know that they're making money off of you by the semester. Well, you try to do your best to finish up and wrap up your degree by the semester. You know, I mean, it doesn't guarantee that it will lead you to the job of your dreams right but at least you know the quicker you're out of there the less debt you'll be facing you know in terms of your uh, interest accruing and whatnot right um, because your interest as well mark if i'm not mistaken depending on what kind of loan you take your interest accrues too while you're in school that certainly happened to me so 
because my, my girlfriend's interest accrues daily. Yeah. Yeah. Ab- that's, a, that's a real snowball. Right that's there. a real, real true snowball. So make sure that, you know, make sure that, you know, you get into school and you get out as quick as possible. If it's, if it's, uh, uh, if it's in your immediate plans and it's possible for you to pay your interest while in school, I'm sure Mark can second that. Try to pay your interest off while in school. That will definitely help a bit. Um, and then on top of that, you know, um, educate yourself. Because, again, I'm coming from a place where I literally, I'm 20... Um, five years old at this time, 25, 26 years old. And I'm thinking if I go for my uh, master's degree, I, I complete it, and now I get a job or the job of my dreams, you know, and I'm making 35, 40K a year, I can pay off that 20K of student loan debt in one year and be done. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's not how the, wor- the money works in this society, especially in America. If you go out for a 55K job for a job interview, know that you're possibly making somewhere around 40, $42,000 a year at that job after taxes you know so make right. make sure you know that just because your job prospects says 35 40k a year you're not going to make 40k all that money is not going to you a portion of that is going to uncle sam and that is deducted by every paycheck and whatever it is that you uh, are rightfully owed back you will get that in your tax refund so also uh educate yourself on taxes too um that's another topic for another episode but i think that also will put into perspective to you while you're it'll, it'll put into perspective to you why your parents file taxes every year why why businesses file taxes and why taxes are such a big thing in this country um so that's my words of uh my word of wisdom for today and um you know if you're going through it uh just you know just just try your best um try your best to educate yourself try your best to stay privy to what's going on out there uh, and i will say this though mark for the people that don't know me being an educator i will say this yep. there are loan forgiveness uh, f- uh forgiveness programs for people that are teachers so if you are in the teaching wow. career and you uh depending on what part or sector of the government your loans come from if you teach in the classroom for about five years um or if you teach uh for about 10 years which is about 120 months and you make those consecutive payments there are programs within the government that uh that that literally uh they 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 pay off the rest of your student loans um wow. so uh they're, they're called the, the act itself i think if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it is it's called the public service forgiveness act um and so with the public service forgiveness act um if you are in a profession that gives back to the community whether you're a teacher an educator such as myself or whether uh you know um you work for the government um in some governmental uh, capacity or if you work for the government or the state in terms of welfare and uh um, you know, uh, social services and helping out the people, uh, there, de- you definitely may qualify for, uh, this public s- service, uh, loan forgiveness program. Be sure what, right, be sure whatever loans, uh, loan services company that you are with. I know for me personally, I'm with fed loan services. Be sure to know the ins and outs and the perks of what your loan provider uh, provides you. And when you find out, depending on the sector or field that you work in, be sure to negotiate what it is that you need or what you're searching for. And and they should be able to work with you. Um, and yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Also, too, there are also jobs out there. I don't know which ones uh, per se, but there are also jobs out there that will pay for you to go get your master's degree and things of that nature. Now, that doesn't qualify as student loan forgiveness, but I will say this. If there are jobs that will offer for you to go back to school and pay for you and return on the, that investment. They expect you to give more of yourself to the company in order for you to move up in the, within the ranks. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. that is that is a, a no-brainer. You would be crazy not to take that opportunity and invest it and, and look into Definitely. it. Definitely. All right. So, um, yeah. There was, there was actually another one. Um, recently, Chipotle, mm-hmm. is they changed their, um, you know, their strategy, and they're now offering full... Full rides to all employees that major in technology and business. Whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. But I believe they said it had to be an accredited school. They had a few qualifications, but they said a full ride hmm. for any degree, you know, technology or business. Now I don't know if this is for full-time employees only or full-time and part-time, but Chipotle is offering full rides. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's one of my favorite fast food stops of, of all, too. Well, shout out to Chipotle. <laughs> Seriously, man. They, 
They're leading the way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Would you look at that? All right, ladies and gents. Well, that's our episode for this week. Uh, Mark, did you uh, feel as if that was sufficient? Was there anything else that you feel as if you you missed or needed to get off your chest? Uh, nah, I mean, aside from you know just being aware, you know, if, if you're if you're into school and you're you're into education, you need to be all the way in. So you should be aware of the scholarships available. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not going to buy a big ticket item when I know I can have a coupon. So, right. <laughs> or a coupon, however it's pronounced. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got to be aware of what you're buying and, and what you need to save the most amount of money. Absolutely. Because there are savings out there. You know, Chipotle. You know, for sure. Work there for a little while. You know, who knows, man? For sure, but, for sure. You notice uh, Chipotle didn't say, you know, you can have any degree. They said technology or business. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say it. But you <laughs> <laughs> I already know what you're gonna say, Mark, for sure. Chipotle already said it, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome, that sounds good. Absolutely, for sure. Um and I know a lot of you out there, uh shout out to those of you that were saying, Oh my gosh, we love your podcast, but your episode last week was too short, twenty six minutes. That doesn't even qualify as a full episode. Well, today we gave you guys about an hour and 20 minutes all right an hour and 20 minutes or so so we definitely hope you got your money's worth or your ears worth full filled with knowledge and gems in regards to this in regards to the student loan debt crisis all right so uh moving onward all right our next episode coming to you all next week all right will be about masculinity masculinity and how it affects boys and as well as men in today's modern america all right uh, but until then, you already know you're tuning into the wisest podcast, all right? So, before we uh, head out, I, myself, ladies and gents, I am Kevin Anglad. And I am Mark And you are tuning into the Wise Guys podcast. See you all next week. Right. Peace. Stay wise. <laughs>